Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian, and today we are diving into five different samples from Westland Distillery in Seattle, Washington. I'm a bit over my head here, so the whole American single malt category I am very inexperienced on. Honestly, I probably couldn't even tell you the definition of what a single malt actually means. I think I initially assumed that it was just single malted barley grain. I think as I'm trying to dive, I'm finding out that this, that's not exactly what it is. I'm not here to even get into that right now. So call me an idiot if you want to. But really what I'm here about is because I've been able to try some of these samples from various friends. Michael, thanks for sending me a sample previously of a bottle you got a chance to get. And then Porkins, thank you for the five samples we're gonna talk about today. But I have five different Westland samples here, and they're all processed slightly differently, and I'll talk through those as we go. But it's being able to explore these samples from Porkins that through this and the other stuff that I've seen, and other picks that I've seen come out, I'm really intrigued by what Westland's doing, and I hope to look forward to more of these products. Part of what I'm doing here is because they don't offer this in here uh, in Kentucky, and so I'm not able to get Westland here. Uh, there's no picks that are coming out here, and anytime I see a group that has picks of this, they're usually probably still sitting. I think I've still seen the Rare Bird 101 pick. The first one that I'm going to try here today is still available at the time of this recording, and I find it interesting that some products sell out so fast and then some products don't and this category is one that i feel like people are a little bit less familiar with and so i wanted to dive into some of these samples the first sample we're diving into is the symposium barrel 5700 this was a collaboration with rare bird 101 malt review and keg and bottle and the nose is so fun it's Got these fruity notes, little green apple, little orange marmalade, a little bit of fig in there as well. These champagne-like notes there, but underlying note of smoke as well. And I think part of that too is just because this one is aged in that tequila barrel. I think we might get some of that kind of smoky agave nature come out of this one. But that's why it brings up some of these sweet uh, aromas. It's not quite vanilla but it just has this nice sweetness to it like agave would and this kind of smoky finish as well. Taste on the palate. I think scotch drinker will enjoy this. I think a tequila drinker will enjoy this. And not to say that a bourbon drinker wouldn't enjoy this. I think they would. I just think that there are gonna be familiar flavors, those kind of soft florals, the silkiness, the easy drinking nature that a lot of times scotches can be, let alone if you like kind of that smoky, uh, smoke, the, the, the peated nature of it. I think you'll have familiarity with this first sample here, but it gives you a lot of nice sweet notes with a lot of smokiness as well. Very unique start to this tasting. And the second one that we're gonna get into, this is gonna be barrel 2423. Now this one is going to be in red wine casks, and I'm telling you, it smells like pure maple syrup on the nose. Big sweetness, big, Jammy fruits. Let's go ahead and dive into a taste here. Man, you taste every bit of that 140 proof. It's not really stinging. It's not overly, overly tingy, tingly or spicy. It's big, jammy, saturated preserves, red, purple fruits with this big chocolate backbone and a huge Kentucky hug. You can really feel this one every time you take a sip. Rich mocha notes, dark chocolate, rich, inviting with strands, again, of purple and red fruits. Just lingered in there, but the chocolate is the prominent note on this. Lingering on the palate, again, mixing with this chocolate, kind of took some chocolate and kind of moves into coffee. With this long, lingering coffee note that Kind of reminds me of some of these starlight barrels that we picked before with this kind of in, indigenous rye but you have these just nice chocolate coffee notes playing off each other with these subtle fruit notes tucked into the background too so very different from the first sample 
and, and even at 140 proof again it, it tingles and it has some interesting spice notes all the way it mainly just feel it every time that you take a sip there the next sample that we are going to go to 6140 6140 was four aged and new american oak and then an additional three years so seven years total and Pinot de Chiron, you might remember us talking about Pinot de Chiron when it comes to uh, a barrel that we had done when Blake from Sealbox, that was a uh, Starlight Barrel, it was really enjoyable. Let's go ahead and try this one. And the nose right away, it's it's candy nuts, it's, it's syrupy, there's a, a beautiful fruit note to it as well. Slightly perfumed, but just good sweetness mixed with a little bit of fruit mixed with these kind of candied nuttiness notes. Really enjoyable, really clean. Let's go ahead and try it on the palate. The palate has a lot of fresh notes to it. It's it's cherry pie, jam spread across biscuits. It's maple syrup, not in an overly sweet way. There's a lot of clean, pure notes about this. It's bursting on the palate. It's saturated on the palate. It's, it's layered on the palate. There's so many adjectives I could use for this particular sample. It's clean. It has a lot of flavors. None of them dance on one another, but you get to try a lot of flavors that, that I feel like uh, Westland can do. I feel like it has a lot of flavors that kind of remind me of the one I just tried before that, but it's not as intense, not as heavy, it's not as chocolate forward. It really just pulls all these sorts of nuances apart. It's really enjoyable to take a look at. Let's move to the fourth sample which just so happens to be 2631, 2631. It looks as if it's a single malt, so this is Washington Select Hill Malt. And it says it's first filled in Oloroso Hogshead. Now, if you were to tell me this is American Light Whiskey, I would probably agree with you. Now, while I've had some that have been more birthday cake sweet, this is definitely uh, like artificial popcorn butter sweet. This is birdie botch jelly beans popcorn flavor. Flavor here. So very intense, sort of fake like corn sweetness on the nose. Let's go ahead to the palate. The palate sure is buttery and it continues with some of those same flavors. Some green apple, some honey. There's some fresh yeasty bread roll like notes there but it just continues with this big kind of buttered popcorn note. That's just really overpowering anything else that I can get. Really enjoyable malty characteristic. The mouth feels really good on this one and, and some really enjoyable flavors. But again, it's kind of this um, exaggerated artificial buttered popcorn note to it. I don't hate it, not in love with it either. So we'll move to the last one, which is 5410. Uh, another five malt recipe and it was first filled in x bourbon barrels uh, with french oak x Syrah finishing for a little over two years and this one is very enjoyable really rich smells fruity for sure but then also has kind of some some honey and some some oak notes as well let's go ahead and dive into the powder on this one there's a lot going on with the nose it's hard for me to tease apart now, where I said 2631 could could trick me to be an American light whiskey because it was just so sweet, but it was a specific kind of corn flavor. This one is big, it's intense, it has rushes of fruit, sure, at first, cherry, pomegranate, but it does continue more of that cake batter-like sweetness on going into the finish, even more like an American light whiskey. Those similar ex bourbon notes that you get with a lot of things, you get a lot of corn, you get some oak presence or some of the, the some tannins there, you get some big spice notes there as well, citrus and grain notes as well. But there's there's a lot going on in this, and it's very intense to tackle as well. For being 114 proof, it definitely drinks a little bit above its proof there. The more I chew on it though. The more it has some nice, rich honey and oat notes, some really nice depth that kind of get into a lot of dried fruit notes as well. There's some really fun, tight, deep layers that you can unpack with that last one as well. 
So that's really all that I had here. Five completely different samples from one another, really just to get some descriptions out there of all that you can experience with one distillery here with Westland Distillery coming out of Seattle. I really would like to go out there. I'd like to get a pick under my belt. And, and, but the, again, the problem I mentioned early on, you just never know if these things are gonna sell out. They get really high yields and it's not something a lot of people are educated on. My encouragement to you is if you see something in your area, maybe take a chance on trying it. I know there's an event that was happening in Nashville in the next couple of weeks that was leading through a tasting from Westland. I'm not gonna be able to make it. But again, if you're in the Nashville area, tune into Cork Dorks. They're gonna give you some information about that if you're one of the VIP uh, email customers. Maybe you saw that come through earlier this week. Highly recommend checking them out. If you're near the area, if you're passing through Seattle, highly recommend going by Westland Distillery, seeing what kind of things they have either to try, what they have available to buy in the distillery. Let me know if you've tried Westland. Let me know what your thoughts have been on your experiences you've tried with them. Again, a lot of different products. It's one of those things that I feel like you might want to try before you buy or you know the source of which is going to recommend you try it just because they vary so much. But that's another really unique thing that I like about it and why I want to do this video. I wanted to put a little highlight on Westland Distillery. For those who may not know, it's a brand I'm highly suggesting you check out. And specifically, the 6140 is probably one that you'll see on my craft whiskeys of the year list towards the end of the year is one of my favorites that I've had so far. Guys, thanks so much. Let me know for other content you wanna hear me talk about in upcoming videos on the channel. Hope this was insightful, hope it was educational. Until next time, we'll see you all later.